I've been holding my breath I've been counting to ten Over something you said And I've been holding back tears While you're throwing back beers I'm alone in bed You know that I I'm afraid of change Guess that's why We stay the same So tell me to leave I pack my bags Get on the road Find someone that loves you better than I do, darling, I know Cause you remind me every day I'm not enough, but I still stay Feel like a lifetime just trying to get by while we're dying inside I've done a lot of things wrong, loving you being one But I can't move on you know that I, I, I'm afraid of change Guess that's why we stay the same So tell me to leave, I pack my bags, get on the road Find someone that loves you better than I do, darling, I know you remind me every day I'm not enough But I still stay If you want me to leave Then tell me to leave And baby I'll go Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're checking out a beautiful song by Noah Cyrus. It's called July, but that word isn't actually mentioned in the song at all. A little interesting fact for those of you who haven't got your fingers on the pulse of pop. Noah is actually the daughter of Billy Ray Cyrus, if you remember that old classic, the achy breaky heart, and the sister of Miley Cyrus. What a talented family this one is. Really, really nice song, this one. It's involving mostly open chords, but we've got an F chord. There are a few different approaches that we can use for F. If you're a real beginner and you're just getting started, you can use like a small smaller F major 7 chord or a mini F. If you're a little bit more advanced, you might like to try reaching over with the thumb to grab the bass note of the F. I'll talk through a few of those different options. The strumming is also an interesting one because if you're, again, if you're a beginner, you might want to stick with real simple strumming using a pick. You could use lots of different strumming patterns here, but if you want to get a little bit more into it, I'd recommend trying to do this finger strumming thing where we're playing the bass note with the thumb and strumming with the finger, but that's not necessary. Okay, so you can definitely play the song kind of simply using easier chords and a pick to strum or strumming with your fingers or if you want to get a little bit more detail into playing it just like the record we get into a little bit of palm mute picking out the bass note with the thumb so it's a real it's a song that I call a grower so you can start real simple and as you develop your guitar skills you can start to incorporate these new ideas and it's just a beautiful song lovely like acoustic guitar and voice it's, and a bit of whistling <laughs> if you can whistle um, yeah excuse the slightly croaky thing I've got a bit of a cold going on so I'm thinking of that before performance at the front there might have been a bit subpar but it's, I'm not letting a cold stop me from delivering my guitar lessons anyway let's get to a close-up and check out the chords first of all alrighty then so the chords for the intro the first one you need is an A minor hopefully most of you are familiar with that if you're not familiar with the easy open chords go check out the beginner course over on justinguitar.com it's all there for free teach you how to play all of these chords nicely then you need a C chord which again I'm hoping you're familiar with now the next chord is an F chord now there's lots of different approaches to F. If you're a real beginner, you can take your C chord, move fingers three and two down one string. So there'll be nothing on the thickest two strings. You won't be able to play those thickest two strings. Then it'll be third fret, second fret, first fret, open. Okay, so. I'm in holding my breath. I've been counting to 10 over something you said. Works well, this F major seven. If you're feeling a little bit more adventurous, you might like to try moving the third finger over to the third fret, or it won't move if you're changing from the C. Little finger goes down on the third fret on the fourth string. So you, this time you don't play just the thicker string, and you're going to play third fret, third fret, second fret, first fret, 
and the open string. Technically, this is called an F major 7 slash C, but whatever, it's just a variation of F. So you've got this little F major 7, and you've got the F major 7 over C. If you can do that one, you might like to try flattening your first finger down. So then you've got 3rd fret, 3rd fret, 2nd fret, 1st fret, 1st fret. So your first finger is doing like a little mini bar there. Now, if you happen to be a more advanced guitar player, what you might like to try is this little mini chord F chord like this. So the same as the F over C, but third finger's back on the fourth string. And then your thumb reaches over to grab this bass note. So the bass note is played by the thumb, and then the third finger is playing this. The, the fifth string is usually muted. I do a clever thing sometimes where I put my third finger in between the two strings, and I can hold two strings down with one finger. That's definitely not a beginner thing, um, or if you're new to the thumb over technique. So usually the thumb, uh, the third finger would be on the fourth string, muting the fifth string so that one's not sounded. So you'd have first fret, mute, if I can make myself mute it, then third fret, second fret, first, first. Okay, that would be the different options you got for F. So I'm just going to say F when I'm doing the lesson. It can be whichever one of those things you're capable of doing. So the intro starts with A minor, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, to F for two bars. F, two, three, four, and again, A minor, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, F, two, three, four, F. So the verse, I've been holding a C and it's going to F for two bars again. A minor's holding back C while you're throwing back F. I'm alone in another bar of F. You know that A minor C is afraid of F. That's kind of funny. Guess that's A minor C. We stay the F. So that whole section there is all A minor for one bar, C for one bar, and two bars of F for the intro and all of the verses. There is a little step up, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. But first of all, let's nail down the chords in the chorus. So the chorus starts with a C chord. The very first time it does the C chord, it also does like half a bar of C and half a bar of A minor. But I think the, the second time through and subsequent ones, it's going straight from the C to the A minor. So my suggestion would be to do one bar of C and one bar of A minor. If you want to be like super duper pedantic and play it just like the record, then you do C for one bar, C for another half bar, and then to the A minor. But I don't think most people will notice if you go straight to the A minor. So, so my recommendation would be, so tell me to C, I'll pack my A minor, get on the air. Find someone that A minors you better than C does, darling, I F. Cause you're a G chord every day. I'm not an A minor, but I still D minor. Let's go through that chord progression again. So it's C, then A minor, then F. Two bars. Find someone that, this now it's A minor to C and then to F. Okay, it's important to get that. So the first time it's going C, A minor, F, F, then it goes A minor, C, F, F. Then it's this second part of the chord progression, which is going the G, U to G chord every day. Now this, I should uh, explain this one. G again is one of those chords where there are lots of different approaches. I tend to use my third and fourth fingers here because it feels the nicest in this. You can see I don't have to move my hand much. It's just simpler that way. If you want to play G like a traditional way or just with fingers three and four or one, two, three and four, if that's the one that feels most comfortable for you, any of those will do. But I tend to use this kind of folky G with just my third and fourth fingers because it feels easiest for me. So I'm doing what's easiest for me. If it's easier for you another way, totally legit. So that chord progression, it's going to the G chord, because you're a G chord every day. I'm not an A minor, but I still D minor. So we've got a new chord there, D minor. I tend to use my fourth finger there on uh, the second string, but some people prefer to use their third finger. Again, it doesn't really matter. My little finger's already in that fret, so it's kind of makes sense, but it doesn't matter. Use the one that's comfortable for you. Let's go through that chorus one more time. So tell me to see, I'll pack my A minor, get on the F. Find someone that A minors you better than C does, darling I F. 
Cause you're a G chord every day But I'm A minor but I still D minor And on the D minor you're just gonna do a strum Probably with your first finger if you do, even if you're doing the finger style one just a little down strum there and it holds Then we're into verse 2 which is exactly the same as the first verse so A minor C to F F that chord progression then it goes into a chorus. There's a little pause at the end of that uh, second verse, actually, just before it goes into the chorus. You should be able to hear that if you listen to the original recording. Uh, speaking of which, listening to the original recording and playing along, very, very important. I encourage you to do that as much as you can. Even if you're doing simpler strumming or simplified chords, playing along with the original recording or a backing track like you might find in the Justin Guitar Lessons and Songs app. Uh, you might want to check that out as well. Great for, uh, you know, having the kind of karaoke backing tracks to play along with, especially if you don't like singing. Um, so you play through the chorus this time there's time before the whistling bit uh it goes it has an additional section so after the whole chorus uh, uh, I don't know. you're not enough but i still stay if you want me to see then tell me to a minor and baby i'll f okay so there's just that little extra section c a minor f f then it goes into the whistle section. So the whistle is twice around the verse progression, which is A minor, C to F. Then it goes to a completely new progression, which is D minor, A minor, F. Does that again. Then it's you remind me every day, I'm not enough, but I still stay. It's probable, I think, I made a little note, but I, now I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm doubting myself. I think that very last time it just goes to vocal a cappella and there's no guitar there. But if you're playing it on, the, on your own, you probably want to add the guitar because the reason it sounds great on the record is there's loads of stacked harmonies. So people sing in different notes of the chords at the same time. So it sounds kind of fuller. But I would recommend that you're just going to play, if you're playing it on your own and singing it, just do the G chord and rhyme me every day that I'm a minor, but I still be minor. I think that works kind of nicely so my recommendation always when you're learning a song is to be able to play along with the actual recording or a back and track using just very simple rhythm so probably like one strum per bar so literally just going um, with whatever F chord you're using just literally strumming along like that making sure that you got the chord changes right before you introduce any rhythm so aim at it I've been holding my breath, I've been counting to ten over something you said. Just making sure that you got those chord changes fast enough, because what you don't want to do is introduce the idea of playing a wonky rhythm. You don't want to be going, I've been holding my breath, I've been counting to ten over something you said. That's a really bad habit to get into, which is why the backing track thing is such a good idea because it teaches you not to make mistakes with the rhythm. It's the most common thing, the mistake that beginners make is introducing this idea of being able to stop the rhythm. Rhythm shouldn't stop. Rhythm is a groove. It's really important that you just simplify the rhythm till you get the chords fast enough to play along, then introduce the rhythm. So there are lots of different options here. It's kind of fast. So you think of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So strumming like on every beat would sound a little bit weird to me. Like, I've been holding my breath. I've been counting to ten over something you said. I'm not sure that's, if you're playing it with a pick, I feel like that's kind of a little bit weird. Playing just on beats one and three would kind of work. So going, I've been holding my breath. I've been counting to ten over something you said. Be like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If you want to get a little bit more fancy, you might like trying to pick out the bass notes. So going, that sounds kind of much more like it. So in this sort of case, you're going one, two, three, four. You're playing a bass note. So whether you're doing it with the, if you don't finger style, you use your thumb, but we'll talk a bit more about that in a second. I'm talking about if you're using a pick, you'll be playing just the bass note. Then the chord. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. It's a really nice progression if you do it, if you want to use a pick and just strum it on. But there are lots of different approaches to this. Do remember if you get into picking out the bass note that you might introduce the little climb up. So between the A and the C, it goes one, two, 
three, four, one. Okay, so it's just the second finger is moving over to the note B, which is the uh, second fret of the fifth string. One, two, three, four, one, three, four, one. Open A string, that's the fifth string. Second finger, second fret, going up to the C. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, if you want to get into the finger styly thing, what I really like about this is having the thumb, the thumb is playing on beats one and three, except for when you do a climb up. The, the general pattern is going one, so you do a thumb on beat one, and then and, two, and will be the first finger, up, down, up, okay? One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... So you probably want to spend a bit of time working on that first of all. Okay, let's do a little bit of a close-up on that. So this pattern, the thumb is playing the bass note of the chord, which will be the fifth string for the A minor, the fifth string for the C, but the thicker string for a G or an F. Okay? So it's moving around where you're going to play the thumb. But the main pattern, one and two and three and four. Thumb, up, down, up with the first finger. And it should really feel a bit more like a strum. So it's not like flicking in and out with the first finger. One and two and three and four. Okay, obviously there's some extra embellishments we can add in, but you want to start with that before you start getting anything fancy. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. And you, the G, it stays on the thicker string. Hey, I'm not in A minor, it's the fifth string to D. Okay, if you wanted the rhythm for the D minor, you'd be playing the fourth string, that's the note D. It's a really nice pattern. On the original recording, there is another element to it, a bit more advanced, where you use a, the palm of your hand to sit on the strings a little bit, right back where the bridge is, and then you get a bit more muted. Makes the bass sound a little different to the chord. It's nice. Okay, but then it's a little bit more advanced technique. Like I said, all I'm doing is resting the kind of middle part of my palm on those bass strings. Not all of the strings like that, just the bass strings. And then we end up one, and two, and three, four, one. So you're using the thumb and you can still get a little up brush with the first finger. One, and two, and three, four, one. So it's just like, and you might get wrong notes there, like in between the... Like it's just strumming whatever, it doesn't really matter. Should be nice and light, that first finger. If you want to get a little bit more fancier again, you can start adding in a backbeat hit as well, which is a little bit more of a crunchy hit there on two and four. So you can see I'm actually kind of lifting my arm up now and trying to do that the palm has to hit first before the first finger hits to get this little percussive hit. The percussive hit's probably a little bit beyond kind of beginner stages, but it's uh, included in quite a few lessons over on the website, so you might want to check out uh, Muted Hit in Your Rhythm or Muted Hit Strum. You'll find uh, full lessons on how to actually practice doing that. Well, I think we're about there with this tune. I really hope that you enjoy learning it. It's a great grower because you can play it real simple and you can add in more and more detail as you progress on your guitar journey. If you enjoyed this lesson, I really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. YouTube tells me that a pretty small percentage of people who like my videos actually bother to hit the subscribe and it makes a big difference to me for the growth of the channel and inspiring me to keep doing more free guitar lessons for you all. So yeah, I'd appreciate it if you hit that little red button down there if it's not too much bother for you. Uh, have you 
yourself an absolutely fantastic day. Remember, there are loads more lessons over on the website, completely free. So go and check it out if you want to learn more about chords or strumming or rhythm or loads more songs exactly at this level. I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care. Bye-bye.